we always try to maximize earnings because in spite of my, uh, my own interest in environmental issues, nothing happens unless money is associated. It's really the way to roll. It's absolutely the case. You can, you can say that it's the right thing to do, and it probably is, but unless there's money associated with it, it usually won't happen. Does money make the world go round? If this statement is true, how can we harness this mentality to provide environmental solutions to issues of development, specifically waste management? Although public awareness on pollution and climate change has risen over the past several decades, environmental degradation remains one of the most pressing issues of our generation. As we studied waste management in Ho Chi Minh City, the industrial capital of Vietnam, we began to see a correlation between the amount of local environmentalism and the state of the Vietnamese economy. We first noticed this relationship when visiting landfills around the city. They are ugly, smelly, and necessary. Without them, garbage would collect in the streets and pose a serious threat to the health of citizens. With them, garbage can be safely sequestered so that any harmful chemicals present in decomposing trash are contained in a small area. Some badly constructed landfills, however, are little more than waste dumped into a hole in the ground and covered with dirt, and are still dangerous to people and wildlife in the surrounding area. To ensure that its landfills are well planned, Ho Chi Minh City has experimented with hiring a foreign company, California Waste Solutions, to run one. The landfills are lined and sealed with plastic and sand. Any rainwater that hits it runs off it doesn't go back and add more leaching. Again, that also benefits you. The better a cap you put on, the less liquid you're going to have to treat during your closure period. So again, there's incentive both environmentally and economically. Methane gas given off by the decomposing trash used to escape into the air and cause harm, but it's now captured and sold to electric companies for a profit. Even with all of these innovations, however, the truth is they are still a huge environmental risk. Rain is still penetrating through the tarps and sand and the resulting runoff must be treated before leaving the site. Methane, a greenhouse gas, still wafts into the atmosphere from uncovered mounds of waste. It may appear to be more economically beneficial to allow this dangerous pollution today, but the future cleanup costs of the same pollution will be much greater and cause much more harm to the environment. If money makes the world go round, why has no one invented a truly sustainable method for managing our trash? While in Vietnam, we've come to learn that the global market connects individuals on every continent in profound ways. For instance, with the current global financial crisis, consumers in the United States have cut back on purchases of non-essential goods. When, 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 when somebody's mom doesn't want to go buy their son the G.I. Joe that comes in the, in the cardboard box, China stops making the cardboard box. When they stop making the cardboard box, they stop buying the paper. Everything is connected. Through this chain of supply, consumers in the United States impact people all across the globe, and Vietnam is no exception. We encountered an example of the ways in which global changes in supply and demand have ramifications on the local level when we had the opportunity to observe scavengers at work. These are men and women who sort through garbage to find recyclable goods, which they then sell to a middleman who proceeds to resell them to various individuals and businesses. We spoke with the scavengers at Cordaid, a trash collector's union. Five months ago, scavengers could earn 80,000 dong a day from selling recyclable goods. Today they bring in only 30,000 daily. They don't know why. They collect materials, bring them to the middleman, and he names the price. As the market price of recyclables decreases around the globe, Vietnamese scavengers suffer. They stand at the bottom of the economic ladder, and they and their families bear the brunt of the financial blow. So yes, you can't give paper away today. Paper it was a commodity. 
four months ago. I could sell it. Now it's costing me money to store it. If it now costs more for scavengers to collect paper than they will earn by selling it, they have no incentive to collect that type of waste. Because of the weakening economy, paper could potentially begin to pile up on the streets. This begs the question, should waste management really be a private, profit-driven enterprise? Having spoken to the scavengers, the answer seemed to be no. But the next facility we visited forced us to reconsider. Outside of Coastal Quignon, we went to see a large dump and the attached composting facility. Their incoming trash is machine sorted into piles for organic and inorganic waste and the organic waste is composted. This compost is then sold at cost to fertilizer companies for further processing. If you add, if you add more benefit from the environment, this is uh, the land, you reduce the land, you reduce the methane gas, go to the, 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 uh, the air. While it's not impossible that the owners of the compost facility simply had the environment's best interests at heart, we wondered if they had another motive for their eco-friendly actions. As it turns out, by running a composting program, the landfill can earn money in the carbon credit market. However, not all composting is driven by the profit motive. We also visited a smaller, community-run facility where six workers separate the organic and inorganic material by hand. The compost produced is then purchased by local farmers. This small-scale program is successful because it is integrated with the surrounding community and the local economic system. Waste management in Vietnam is largely market-driven and such a system has its pros and cons. In contrast, waste management in the United States is primarily government-run and is paid for with tax money. This solves some of the problems of the Vietnamese system. For example, waste paper will get picked up in the U.S. whether or not the market price for it is high. However, new problems like a lack of accountability are created. Perhaps a combination of the two systems would work better than either does alone. So where do we go from here? Even the most effective system for waste management is still just an attempt to cope with the never-ending piles of trash humans produce. Maybe the best solution is prevention. Would it be possible to produce no waste at all?